You may or may not be speaking today. Just be ready for that. Um, yeah, it is. We really enjoy that part is being able to come, see, visit, make relationships, build connections with the different churches around the Blue Mountains. That's one of the, our favorite things to do um, in the springtime as we ramp up for our season. We get to come back, see old friends, make new friends. Um, and like we we go everywhere. And we, we see so many different types and styles of churches. It really is a blessing for us to know that right now at the same time, our friends in downtown Enterprise have got three great big TV screens in their brand new space, and they are loving life up there. And we've got our friends in Prairie City. They're in the same building they've been in for since probably eternity past. And um, they, they are welcoming their new pastor. And so it's great to have all these connections. And by the end of what I have to say today, hopefully you'll see that a little bit more. Um, but I just want to say thank you for welcoming us here today um, and just sharing your space with us. Um, this is probably, I've been at this five, almost five years now. And I think this is the first time we've been in a middle school on a church visit. So we can check that one off our list. So thank you very much. Uh, let me pray for us and uh, we'll get started. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for bringing us here, um, for just giving the message today. May these be your words about camp um, that you have, have tailored for, for this day and this place. So we just thank you for this wonderful place and the people you brought here today to hear what you have to share about camp. So I just thank you and pray that I am just that vessel for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so if, you, if you've never been to camp, there are people here who have, are very closely connected to camp. Um, some of them got married at camp, am I right? Yeah, yeah, these two here, Darren and Marissa got married at camp. So um, lots of campers. Lots of staffers. Um, so it's exciting to come back and reconnect. Um, I got to take Seth. I'm going to tell the story, Seth. It was about 11 o'clock, and I got to take Seth <clears throat> after, I don't even, what was that game? Mafia. Mafia. Yeah, great game to play again. We're never going to play it again. Because Seth came screaming around the side of the chapel, tripped and fell, found the sharpest rock he could find that was like this big and poked it right through his leg. We took him to the nurse's station, and what was it, about 3 a.m., Tyler? 3.30. We got back to camp about 3.30 after bringing Seth over here to the beautiful Pendleton Hospital and getting to experience it in the middle of the night. So that was a good time. So just the, the, the things that happen at camp, there's so many stories. So just to share some of those with you and know that there are stories here. Um, for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> Darren's camp name is Bucket. And when he needs all his little campers as a counselor to come to him, he beats on the side of this bucket, and they just come running, <laughs> like mosquitoes to a light. It's amazing. And they throw all their stuff in there, and off they go to the next thing they're going to do. So it's really cool to have those connections and just be able to share those. Um, so our goal is that we make more, because that, that's what camp is about. It's about relationship. It's about building a relationship and having people experience the gospel of Christ in an amazing place. Um, so this is, you can just barely see our playground over here in the bottom right-hand corner. This is at camp, um, this photo. So just the amazing place that it is set apart by him. Um, and we like to say, and you'll hear more, um, you know, creation screams of his glory. And we get to see that. And we bring up outdoor school kids, and they get to experience that glory without us saying a thing. And so it's really, really awesome to have that opportunity. So we'll dive into it here. Um, there it goes, Audrey. Thank you. So our mission at camp is to use the camp setting to foster spiritual growth in the lives of individuals in the local church. And this is the one you hang on the wall. Okay, this is our, this is our mission statement that goes on the wall. Y'all have that. But the, the boots on the ground mission statement that we like to use is that when people cross the bridge across Meadow Creek in the bottom of the canyon to come to camp, that they take a step closer to God. Whatever that step looks like for them. It could be for some of them, it could be the very first step in building their relationship with Christ. For others, it could be one step in a long journey of steps. For some, it's the first step they've taken in a while toward Christ. 
But our goal is that that step is a lasting step and then it lasts when they go back into the real world. Um, we talk often at camp about the mountaintop experience, the camp experience, because when you go to camp and you experience God in a new way that you've never experienced him before because your cell phone doesn't work and your, those distractions go away. And when the distractions go away, that small voice gets a little bit louder and people can experience him. And so we actually tell our campers that this is a mountaintop experience. And when you're standing at the top of a mountain, there is only one direction that you're going to go. And that's down. And the enemy likes to exploit that fact. So you need to be on your game when you leave camp so that all of this growth you've had at camp does not go away. So we, we say that outright. We let them know that it's going to happen. And that's why it's important to us that when people come across that bridge, that step isn't just, I'm closer to Christ at camp, and when I leave camp, I can slide back. It's that when they leave camp, they stay closer to Christ so that they can go back and be part of their local church and be part of what God's doing in their community. So that's our goal. The biggest thing that we feel that we do to do that is our summer camp. That's where our heart is. That's why all of the staff that you're going to see in just a minute are there. We talk about the different jobs we do at camp, but when the rubber meets the road, nobody's there to clean a, clean a toilet. They're there to clean the toilet so that the camper has an enjoyable experience and can meet Christ in our summer camp season where we can tell them openly about Christ. So these are our dates for those of you that are interested. Um, primary camp starts at first grade in the upcoming fall. So if you have a student in there, that gives you an idea of where they are. And then it pretty much just goes on upper elementary starts at third grade in the fall. And then you can kind of extrapolate the rest out of that. You're smart people. You've been around long enough to know that middle school campus, middle school kids in high school, so on. So, so this, is, this is what we, what we live for at camp. This is where we spend most of our time and effort and energy in our brains. It may not be where we actually use our hands the most because there's another 10, 11 months out of the season, out of the year, but that's, what we, that's why we're there. Um, some of you may be going, wow, I really want to go to camp, but I might not be in high school. I might be a touch older than that. That's okay. There are opportunities for you um, to come to camp and serve, whether it be during one of these sessions as a guest counselor, where you come up and you're in a cabin with 10 to 12 young people and you use your bucket or whatever you use and you scurry them around camp for whatever they need to do. Or maybe you're like, that's not really me. I'm too old. I can't. I got to tell you a story about an old guy. The first time he came to camp, I didn't know this, but he, he, he's old. Like, gray hair, gray beard, old. And I was like, he calls himself, his camp name is Popsicle. I said, Popsicle, are you going to make it this week? He said, by the grace of God, Joe, I'm going to make it. So he gets to the end of that week, and I said, how'd you do? He's like, man, that was the hardest week of my life. It was upper elementary school. That was the hardest week of my life. I don't know if I could ever do that again. Can I come back after next week and do middle school camp? I was like, <laughs> sure, Popsicle, you can come back and do middle school camp. So he came back that year, he did middle school camp, and he swung on our giant swing to celebrate his 70th birthday that year. And that was three years ago. And he's planning on coming back this year. So he will be our 73-year-old cabin counselor this year. And he does things differently now than he did that first year because he learned a lot that first year. Um, he's got a really cool hiking stick and a chair and all this stuff. He does what he needs to do to get through the week. And it's amazing to see him serve in that way. So I can't take age as an excuse anymore to not be a counselor because I've got Popsicle who'll be turning 74 this year uh, at camp. But if, if you're like, just doesn't work with me, the easiest and best way to get involved in camp Number one is to pray. But if you want to be actually hands, boots on the ground, the best way to do that is during our work weekend. And that comes up at the end of April, the last weekend in April, where we have all kinds of projects from picking up pine cones and sticks and pine needles that have fallen over the winter to we're going to try to move a shed this year, rebuild one of its walls, all just all kinds of things. So we start on Friday and we go till Sunday afternoon and we just do stuff the camp needs um, across the board. So We'll feed you. We'll give you a message. Um, if you don't, David Brashears is actually going to be our speaker for work weekend this year. So 
We are super excited for that. Always a good time of fellowship and time to just hang out at camp. So if you're interested in what camp looks like and what it is, um, that's a good opportunity too. the last weekend in April to come up and just help out. So um, I was going to tell for those of you who don't know where camp is, Camp, if you're going to LeGrand and you turn off at the Hillguard exit and you get up past Starkey, it's about five minutes past Starkey on Highway 244 down off to the right in the Meadow Creek Canyon. So it's a great place. Um, those of you that have young kids or grandkids and you want to get them there, the best place to go is to our website and get them registered there. It's all pretty simple and straightforward from there. But I want to share with you um, this thing that showed up. <laughs> In our, in our mailbox. And I learned something last week when I was in Union. The postmistress actually goes, we call her the postmistress. She's the postmaster at the Union post office. Um, she actually goes to church in Union. And I was doing this presentation and she raised her hand. She's like, actually. So I'm, I'll tell you what, what she told me. But we got a notice in the mail <clears throat> for postage due. 84 cents postage due. I thought, 84, what am I going to get for 84 cents at the post office? So I go down to get it, I pay me four cents, and this is the postcard that was there that we paid 84 cents for. And if you look at this postcard, here's the rest of it, the back side. There it is. Okay, there's, our, there's the postage due, 84 cents. Very short message. I haven't counted the words, but it's not very many. So we paid a lot of cents per word to get this. And originally I thought, that if you look at this, this stamp up here, it looks to me like it's part of the stationary set that grandma gives the grandkid to pretend to play mail. It's actually a real, it's actually a real stamp. The problem is, it's in the wrong spot. I did not know this until last week. So if you want to send a postcard, this stamp needs to be in that corner and oriented correctly with the address down here. Who knew? Otherwise, it's posted you 84 cents. Okay? Just saying. But with that, let's read this postcard. This was actually sent from a Sunday school class in Milton Freewater. So let's read the postcard and see what this young person had to say. Hello. Thank you for all you are doing to share the love of Jesus. We are praying for you. God bless. Okay? Like I said, 84 cents for those words doesn't seem like a lot. But when you actually dig into it, this is pretty profound. Okay? And you're going, Joe, you got to be kidding me. This can't be that profound. Okay? Look at what his first sentence says. Thank you for all you are doing to share the love of Jesus. And I thought to myself... Okay, well, what are we doing to share the love of Jesus? Okay, so we came up with a quick list. So here it is. Summer camp, outdoor school, church connections, rental group connections, year-round staff, track crew, welcome center, infrastructure upgrades, bathroom construction, and capital campaign. This is like the 50,000-foot view for each of these things. There's so many little projects within each one of these. But to think about the fact that we're thankful for year-round staff. Because when I started, there was two of us. And we could not be doing half of what we're doing now if there was still two of us. God has blessed camp to the point where now there's five of us. That's a huge thank you to Christ because there's no way that could have been possible outside of him. So the other one I want to focus on is our outdoor school. And I talked about it a little bit earlier. This is a, a group of outdoor school kids fishing off that bridge I told you about. Some kids have never touched a worm, let alone put it on a hook and thrown it over to go fishing. Um, so we have a volunteer. It's never easy at camp, okay? There's never just a straight story because we don't just send kids to the bridge to go fishing. There's a volunteer that drives all the way from halfway twice a week to teach kids how to build a fishing lure and then they put that fishing lure in their backpack and then they go out to the bridge with a different hook and they put a worm on it and they throw it off and most of the time they catch nothing when they're not catching nothing they usually catch crawdads and every once in a while somebody will pull up a fish and the bridge goes wild 
Unfortunately for the fish, it's been out of the water too long, so then we try to cook the fish and nobody wants to eat the fish. That's how fishing goes at Camp Elkanah. But these kids come up and they have never experienced anything like this before in their life. And so for them to come and spend three days in God's creation without the distraction in their pocket, it changes them. And we get to see them come back to camp. One of them actually came back to camp, walked up to one of our staffers, looked up at her like this, said, you didn't tell me this was a Jesus camp when I was here at outdoor school. And then he ran off and did whatever else he was supposed to do that day. So whereas we can't share the gospel with them because of the public school, church, all that stuff thing going on, what we can do, anything that we have on the wall that's permanent, we can leave it up there. All our crosses, any verse we've painted on the wall can stay up there. So they get exposure that way. They get exposure through Christ's amazing creation. And then a lot of them are like, this place was really neat. I want to come back. And then at summer camp, we open the floodgates and they get to experience Christ in an amazing way. And, and see that even though this isn't what I expected, you didn't tell me this was a Jesus camp, I, I want to know more about this Jesus. And I want to know more about how he can change my life. So we are amazingly blessed by outdoor school. The other things on that list wouldn't be made possible without them. Building two new restrooms wouldn't be possible without outdoor school. Um, I'll tell you a quick story about bathrooms because I can't, I, I can't get away with it without telling the story. The story of the bathrooms is, I'll tell you the short version. When we applied for the grant for the bathrooms through the Oregon State Outdoor School Program, they said, no new construction and we will not give you all of the money that you ask for. I said, okay, well, at least we'll get something to start with because the bathroom situation at camp needed some help. So we applied. And they came back and said, actually, go ahead and build those new bathrooms and here's all the money that you asked for. So they gave us our entire ask and allowed us to build new bathrooms when they said they weren't going to be able to do that. There's only one guy that can make that happen and it isn't me. Okay, that's direct from Christ. There's no way those bathrooms would be going up without him. So outdoor school has opened up an entirely new world for us, and we feel blessed every day because of it. So if we look at the next section, his next sentence, he says, we are praying for you. And that's one thing that I really want to communicate when we come to churches is we want prayer. We feel it all the time. One of the best stories I have is we were trying to move a backhoe that hadn't ran for about five years. And the backhoe part was off to the side at a weird angle and we needed to move it, but we couldn't start this backhoe. So me and one of the other camp staffers were, okay, how are we gonna, what are we gonna do? Like we need to get this thing moved. We figured we could pull it with something else, but we needed to get that. It was kind of stuck in the ground. So after some hammer work and getting the bucket off of the backhoe, we were like, well, now we need to move it over. How are we going to do that without hydraulic power? I said, well, let's pray. And I knew that we had teamwork Tuesdays, we call it. So every Tuesday we're up there. So if you think about us on a Tuesday, please pray for us. We do weird, crazy things on Tuesday that are only made possible by Christ. Um, so we prayed. And I put my hand on that boom of that bucket, and I was able to push it over to center it. I probably could have done it with one finger. It moved that easy. When we went to move a train car that had been sitting there for probably 80, 90 years with that backhoe that was then fixed, we pulled it and the chain went slack because of the grease and the bearings and everything still worked. So things like that happen all the time. And it's like, there's no way these things are possible without God being there right with us and the power of the prayer. So what else can you pray for? You can pray for this list. If you notice, it should look very familiar. All of those things that we're blessed with, we also need prayer for. Because those are the things that we're working on constantly, trying to move camp forward. Draw your attention to this group of misfits. Okay, This is the full-time year-round staff at camp. And if you look around, you'll see some of them here today. Um, and we feel, like I said, we feel like God has called us there. But camp has never had this structure before, and we've only had this many people there for six months. 
And so for us, this is all new territory, trying to figure out, this may be your title, but what do you actually do, right? A lot of us have been in that position. You take a job that has a title, and in all actuality, you end up doing all of these things over here, and this title doesn't apply anymore. So we're navigating that ground right now, trying to figure out what that looks like for all of these people to work together as a team, to do it well, to honor Christ while we do it, and to make camp a place where people want to come and stay. And so if you look across here and you all have them stand up, um, right next to me, I am the executive director, right next to me is Eric, and he's sitting here in the middle of the front row, second row. Eric is our facilities manager and guest services manager. And what that means is he takes care of all the buildings. And then when we have rental groups that come up and that we partner with to do their own summer camp, we have a group, a Russian group. They bring a bunch of kids from the Willamette Valley and they put on a Russian summer camp. The whole camp turns Russian. All the signs, all the verses on the wall, they're in Russian. So he interfaces with those people and helps them have an enjoyable experience while they're there. Um, to the left of him is Chelsea Davenport. She's our bookkeeper office manager. Um, she's not here this morning, but she takes care of making sure we all get paid and all of the billing and all of the invoicing and all of those things that somebody needs to do. And we appreciate her for that. And then next to her is Joy Brashears, David Brashears' daughter. Used to be Brashears. She got married. Now she's Joy Ferris. But she is our outdoor school education coordinator. So she takes care of all of the outdoor school world and planning all that and getting volunteers and interfacing with schools and all that stuff. So that's Joy. And then to my right, you'll see Tyler and Hero McElrath, and they're sitting back here. Um, Tyler is our, we call him our recreation manager, because he was hired on as one thing, and he did a whole bunch of other stuff, and we're like, yeah, we're going to give you this title now. And probably in about three months, we'll give him a different title. But he's, he does the things, takes care of the things that we recreate on, focusing on the challenge course and all the lawns and all that kind of stuff. And then next to him, that's Hero. And Hero is our program coordinator. And Hero organizes, coordinates all the programs that we do, including our summer camp and everything that all the programming that we put on during the rest of the year. Women's camp, men's retreat, um, Christmas at camp, middle school retreat, high school retreat, all those things. So that's the crew. Please pray for us every time you think of us. Um, we need it all the time. So we're going to go to his last. His last sentence says, God bless. And then I thought about this, and I thought, okay, where are we blessed? If you've been following along, you can guess that it's going to be the exact same list as soon as it works, Audrey. There it is. You just have to stand up, and then it works. Okay? But it's the same list. Because those are the things that we're thankful for. Those are the things that we feel blessed through, and those are the things that we need prayer for. It's, it's the same list. So to bring your attention to one of those things that we feel extremely blessed with now that we have all this staff, this is, so you're, now you're seeing the bridge, and this is the dining hall. The old bathroom sits right there. The chapel sits over here. All the boys' cabins are over here, and the girls' cabins are over there. This building right here, remember I told you about that train car that we moved with the backhoe? This is it. And not, it used to sit right over there. And so we pulled it through the, that gap of trees, through the parking lot, brought it over here, spun it 180, and then drove it up on some new railroad track that we built. And that's going to be what we call our welcome center. Camp never had a really clear place to check in, like a lobby. And so this half of this building will be that. It will be a lobby where people can come in, check in, hang out. It'll have a nice wood stove, some coffee. So if you need some coffee any day, come on up, have coffee with Eric and Tyler and Hero. They'd love to see you in the Welcome Center. The back half of this is going to be offices for all of these people. We used to have one office that we couldn't all get into. Even the five of us that work there couldn't fit into the office. It was so small. And now we expect four people to work out of that office. So giving them a dedicated workspace is huge. And that's a blessing that would not have happened outside of outdoor school, outside of relationships with churches, outside of individual relationships. All that stuff makes possible because of 
this big list. They all interplay with each other. That's why it's important to pray for all of them and think about all of them as a blessing and thank the Lord for all of them. So, that makes this little postcard, three sentences, worth a lot more than 84 cents. And so that's, that's been my focus this first part of this year, is looking at this and thinking about, okay, what are we thankful for? What do we do to share the love of Jesus? And what, what do we feel blessed for? And when I think about that, it's right there. That's his postcard. Not only do I think about it at camp, but what does that look like for us individually and as a church and as a community to think about those three things? What are we thankful for? What do we need prayer for? And what are, we, what are our blessings? And that really, to me, is a good mindset when I go forward. And especially when we, when we come to these different churches and thinking about how can the churches in the greater Blue Mountain do this? Because we get to see it, but the rest of the church doesn't get to see it. Even the churches in your community and the people that you come to church with, how can you be thinking about this mindset when you interact with them? So I brought this home to my wife, and I said, here's what I'm thinking about for this year's camp message. She said, oh, that, your stuff looks neat, but that kid that wrote that, he sounds a lot like another guy. He sounds like the guy that wrote this. Okay? Let's read what Paul had to say in 1 Thessalonians. Okay? He says, We give thanks to God always for you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before God, before our God and Father, your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you put it in that perspective, it's worth a lot more than 84 cents. Because this is the message that Paul was preaching to all those early churches. Because we don't just see it in 1 Thessalonians, we'll also see it in Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. This, this is a prayer for the person sitting next to you in the seat is extremely powerful. And it's crazy to think that this is the prayer that was going on all the way back at the beginning of the church, and this is the prayer that we need for the church right now. This is the prayer that Nick's trying to share as he goes and walks with the cross around all of Oregon. This is the prayer that you want to take to the community of Pendleton. This, it's amazing to think about how applicable this is when you, when you put it into context of today. And then it's not just, it's not just old words on a page. It's, it's very powerful. So that 84 cents is becoming more and more priceless. Because if we keep going, stand up, Audrey. Thank you. <laughs> if we keep going, you'll see that Paul continues. Second Thessalonians. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love of all and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. It's, it's incredible to think about if we as a region, if we as Pendleton Hope Venture come together with this prayer for all those we encounter, how's that going to change? How's that going to change Pendleton? How's it going to change what happens in this building? How's it going to change what happens at camp, in our region? It's, it's, it's really fun for us to get to see it. And it's hard for us to communicate that perspective because you can't really see it unless you see it. But we see what God's doing in this area 
because we travel around. And it's amazing to watch God work in these churches. And so for us, if we were to pray this prayer and follow through, just in our church, just start here, or maybe just in your household, to pray this for your spouse and your children, it's power. He keeps going. You didn't have to stand up? Did you think about standing up? Yeah, thank you. In Colossians, he says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people in the faith and love that springs from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In that same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world. And, and, and that's, that's the key for camp, is that it's the gospel. We want to see that gospel, when people come across that bridge, that that gospel changed their life. That gospel draws them to take one more step. It's not us, it's Christ. And we feel blessed every day that we get to work in that place, because that place is incredible to be there and know that the things we do in our off-season, the work we're doing on the Welcome Center, the work we're doing on the bathrooms, the work we're doing in the chapel and the rest of the cabins to make it better for the campers and the staffers makes this happen. God can do it without us. Unfortunately, we are human and the people that come to camp are human. And so they look at a building and they go, oh, that building doesn't look great. Uh. And they let the building get in the way of what God's doing. And so for us, if we can keep this in the front of our minds, while we are replacing a toilet, while we are painting a wall, while we're shoveling some gravel, mowing the lawn, whatever it is we do at camp, this is where we want our minds to be, so that when the people come, they experience the gospel and they get blessed, and they go back and they share their story of what Christ is doing in their life. Because that's how he moves, through our story. All right, one more, last one. Philemon, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. And that's, we hear all the time how refreshing it is to come to camp and that this thing doesn't work. Because we don't have to ask you to put it in a bucket. We don't ask you to do anything. You come down in the canyon and the signal goes right over the top and you're never going to see it. And so all that distraction that walks around with you in your pocket goes away and God can fill that spot. And he does. And he does it in a mighty way, and we get to see him do it all the time. And so that's our prayer. So if we go back to this, it changes the way we read this. And we get to read this in a way that becomes, like I've said, worth way more than 84 cents. <clears throat> so maybe, maybe just maybe, that 84 cents that I begrudgingly went to the post office and handed over to the guy behind the counter, maybe it really was worth it. And that we get to see how applicable these young, this young man's words were. And it's my hope, it's our hope as camp staff, that when we think of you and when you think of us, that this is your prayer. Because that's, that's what God's church should be doing. Praying for each other, encouraging each other, just like Paul did at the beginning of all those letters. So I'm going to read this one more time to you. And then I'm going to pray, and I'm done after that, Aaron. Thank you, Pendleton Hope Venture, for all you are doing to share the love of Jesus. We are praying for you. God bless. Thank you for the time today. I hope that we were able to share what God's doing at camp, but most importantly, share what God's doing in your life.